BattleBots fans rejoice. The field is revealed and we're going through it all this week in Robot Combat. We kick things off with The Big Deal, who comes back completely redesigned this year, designed by a combination of Emmanuel Carrillo and also the team Immersion guys who build robots such as Immersion, Abrasion and all that jazz. It looks fantastic and also has a little smiley face in the middle. Oh, how cute. It is the funniest bleep I've ever seen. He's turned himself into a pickle. Looking forward to seeing Big Deal back in action. Next, the Brazilians are back with Black Dragon, and this is just the central vertical spinning weapon. It is now Drisk Drum, Egg Beater, Vert, all of it combined, and it's a really good looking weapon on it. The team obviously changes up every time because it is a massive team, the uh, Warrior team, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this team can bring. They were an awesome pit crew last year, and I'm very excited to see them back. Next, we have Blacksmith, who comes in with a Hammersaw design. We saw this being teased previously, but the official announcement shows off the weapon in all of its glory, and it looks very cool indeed. Al Kindle has worked very hard to make this robot. It's a shame that they've had to sacrifice just being a straight-up hammer for winning fights. Uh, I think that's more of a statement on the sport and the, uh, the program than on the team themselves. It still has the fire, though, and I'm excited to see spinny fire things. Orby Blade is next in and I'm very excited to see this machine in action. Those of you who haven't seen uh, King of Bots Series 2 or This is Fighting Robots, then you need to go and check out this robot's history. It is a very powerful horizontal spinner, but we've not seen it up against the sort of caliber of US robots, so we shall have to wait and see uh, how things go for this team, but I'm very excited. I have high hopes. I also have high hopes for this robot, Blip, built by Team Seems Reasonable, and the Aaron Hill-led Blip team are looking strong with this flipper. It is awesome, obviously, the team that brought us Tantrum previously, uh, and Tantrum, of course, used to be a flipper. Blip is the sort of natural progression of this. It is very cool. If you haven't seen the video, it is awesome of this thing being tested out, and uh, the song has been stuck in my head ever since. Bloodsport returns this season with a redesigned wedgelet shape and sort of low profile wedge look that hopefully won't be coming off every five seconds. The mounts, of course, were 3D printed last time round. I don't think they are this time round. They had weapon breakages. They'll have worked on that as well. I'm very excited to see Bloodsport back in action because it was a very powerful machine last year that did very, very well. Don't forget, it was undefeated going into the round of 32. High hopes once again. Captain Shredderator are back this year with a redesigned robot again and lots of different shells that they can spin. It is a full body spinner, of course, as you well know. Brian Nave back competing at the helm. This thing is gonna be spinning and hopefully winning. We saw some excellent fights out of it towards the end of last season. And I'm excited to see what it can do going forward because it was doing quite well, especially in its fight against Rotator in Bounty Hunters. Claw Viper have redesigned their weaponry and now it's a sort of four bar claw that can grab and lift and suplex, which I'm very excited to see because it is just so very unique. This thing is fast as well as we saw last season. Hopefully the driving will follow suit this time round and we'll get to see Claw Viper do some good grappling things. I'm very excited to see it back in action. And may I just say, what an awesome job of the paintwork. Cobalt return, but not as we know it. It is, of course, the vertical spinner version of Cobalt that we saw previously with a redesigned front wedge. No longer have that little wedge look that kept coming off. It should just have things ride up it and be shredded to bits. The difference is the team this year. No longer Dave Moulds, though he did build it, and Sam Smith. Both of them are the big dads now, and they are looking after their kids, so exciting stuff there for them. It's a US-led team for this UK bot. Copperhead returns and looking rather unchanged. Maybe some updates to the paintwork, but uh, that isn't to say that this robot is completely unchanged. Oh, no, 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 it has had a lot of work done to it under the hood, which is usually a good way to go if you want your reliability to be up. Copperhead, let's not forget, were also undefeated going into the round of 32 last year, so I'm excited to see what those changes will bring. Deadlifter back and completely redesigned with a new grappler system, much like Overhaul and Bite Force in the past. This thing has a sort of muscly fist arm thing that comes down, grapples and lifts them up. 
Uh, we've also got the weights on the side. It's a very nice looking robot. I am a little bit worried about those sort of side handle parts. I know that's for lifting the robot, but uh, this look may come at the cost of being hit by Vert, so look out for that. Deep Six are back and completely redesigned with this new look robot. It is very, very big, but not as big as it could go with that weapon. There is a rule preventing them from going any bigger with that weapon, which is a shame, but I suppose necessary. This robot also has the rear support, so it shouldn't be uh, kicking back and bouncing off of the floor and into everything. It can also self right now, so look out everybody, this big spinner is gonna cause a powerful punch. Defender is a team from the Whiplash team, now split. Jason Vasquez of Team Fast Electric Robots has his own robot this season. It's this grappler lifter bar that points the robot upwards, sort of counterlever system to do the lifting, which is interesting. We've not seen it done on any other heavyweights in the sport recently. Um, I'm excited to see it in action. And of course, a shared teammate with a Bike Force member is always a good sign. Double Jeopardy are back after a couple of seasons out with this three-shot cannon now. They have three attempts to get that shooter on target and do the damage. Three slugs coming out. I think it's actually two slugs and a ball bearing. I'm not quite sure, but you'll have to go and check out the Team Double Jeopardy Facebook page to go and double check for me. These well-dressed gentlemen are hoping to be on target this season, and I'm hoping to see some cannon action. One of our new robots for this season is Dragon Slayer, this vertical spinner with two wheels, a unique design, I'm sure. Very strong theming on this robot though, with the scales, the sort of ice and fire of the weapon bar, and the feathers and the knight of the round table look to it, looking very cool indeed. And I'm excited to see this thing in action. I've seen some test footage, it can self write it can uh, hit something very, very hard, so I'm excited for it. Duck come back completely redesigned from what we last saw this four-wheel drive 360 lifter now has the beaky lifter at the front that can open and close it can lift up and down and it can also actually quack which is a fun little extra it does however look like a dot to dot on the top of the robot which is taking away from the design element a little bit for me and i do miss it having a face but i'm excited to see duck back in action this season quack quack end game looking very strong this season the champions are indeed back with a redesigned kind of but mostly the same design as we've seen before the redesign comes more in the paintwork which is looking excellent no longer just a silver box which is what we love to see in fact very little silver on this silver box at all anymore and the design work doesn't stop at the robot oh no the team have had a bit of a redesign as well the all blacks wearing all black looking very cool Free shipping returns, the flamethrower forklift is back in action this season and I'm very excited to see it, most notably because my name is on the robot this season. I have paid my $5 to support free shipping this season and my name is on the right hand side alongside a load of other names as well. So see if you can see me in the episodes, won't you please. The two flamethrowers on the front should cause a big fireball once again. I'm excited for it. The Fireworks Box Fusion returns this dual weaponed robot, had issues last season with bursting into flames spontaneously. Hopefully they will have worked on the internals of that robot in the off season, making this a very dangerous machine. It faced some weaker opponents last year, some stronger but didn't do so well against them, so I think if they can beat the high caliber opponents, we're looking at a strong, strong bracket maker. Ghost Raptor returns once again this season, and it looks thinner than ever, weirdly. They've had a design consultant come in and make it look more characteristic. So we've got some teeth on it, we've got some front forks, we've got lots of paintwork, which looks good. But uh, yeah, the robot is seemingly not very much changed to last year. The biggest change, I think, comes with Chuck Pitts' haircuts. He now has a mohawk, which is a choice. And that's that. Gigabyte is back, and this is a beefy old spinner now. The pole setup has all changed, the spinner has all changed as well now with a really quite meaty shell over the top of this robot that is going to be spinning very fast and very hard. I'm excited to see Gigabyte back in action, especially as they had that bounty win at the end of last year. It was a strong performance from them and they could go very far. Glitch is one of our new teams using Omni wheels at the back of the robot to strafe in any direction. This vertical spinning egg beater 
is very cool looking indeed the lighting the theming it's a triangle which is very cool sort of vertical valkyrie if you will it's a very good looking robot but i do worry that if it's flipped over it may not be able to go very far we shall have to wait and see if that is the case when glitch fights later this year gruff return and they had some issues last season that hopefully will have been rectified the unique drive system of part brushed part brushless saw them through to a bounty final against tombstone and this lifter grappler and dual torch should be one to watch i'm sure the flame will be hotter than ever before exciting stuff from gruff and that is far too much poetry for me for a saturday morning let's leave that there Jen Hirsch and Rhoda and Orion Beach are back with hijinks this season. The undercutter owl-themed robot of bright multi-colours looking very cool as usual. After the bending of the bar last season, the weapon has been redesigned out of AR500 for this season. A very strong material indeed and one that a lot of teams are using for their weaponry going forwards. The back section has also been redesigned very slightly. The wedge shape it is looking very nice indeed. Huge return this season and for the first time have not cut their wheels out by hand. Yes, every other season they have, this season they have not. Not sure why in the supporters picture you're seeing right now that they're using a CAD, but anyway, we'll move on. The back section has been completely redesigned for the poles to be better integrated into the robot and the weapon has been redesigned as well. This sort of asymmetric bar system is going to do them a lot of favours. A robot that seems to have not been redesigned at all is Hydra, but there are some subtle changes this season. We saw preview pictures of Hydra having a vertical weapon this time round for a potential fight later on in the season. We don't know if that will be the case or not. They have the option though. They are the new number one launcher and they showed it last season and are potentially dark horses. Not even that anymore. They're, they're pretty solid picks for the season, I would say. Hypershock are back for 2021 with yet another new robot that they built on site at BattleBots. The new one is a little bit longer than previously and doesn't feature a Shremek anymore. They're going to be relying on their upside down driving ability of Captain Will Bales, which is exciting and means that there's less to go wrong potentially, which means they can focus on the drive, which is the main part, and the weapon, which is the other main part. Exciting stuff. Ice Waver back as a main competitor this time round with that big bar spinner and the redesigned robot we saw in Bounty Hunters last season. Now, Bounty Hunters didn't go too well for them in the past as Scorpios took them out. Hopefully, they'll have fixed up the things that went wrong in that first battle that they were in. It's a little bit of a testing ground that it will help them in the long run. I'm excited to see Ice Wave back in action, most notably because the little bubbers here as well this time. Jackpots are back and on home turf this season in Viva Bot Vegas. The dual vertical blade spinner is looking very good indeed, as are the team who are dressed to impress in their suits. Having had a month to build for the 2020 season, this robot has had plenty more time, work and effort put into it. It has a Shremek now, it has a lot of work been done to it and I'm excited to see it in action. Now our only European team for this year due to the, all the travel restrictions and everything is Jaeger, the German team built by two different builders over in the UK and Germany of course. They came together for the first time at the event, the Undercutter and the Overhead Spinner Hammersaw style machine. These two multi-bot parts will form the only multi-bot in the season. Jaeger is looking impressive and I'm excited to see it in action. Kraken are back as is the narwhal, who as we all know is one of the most important parts of the robot, big love to Wally. Of course Kraken is the most powerful crusher in BattleBots history or so they claim, with more crush than ever before, more crush than even Quantum could quantify, hey hey, that's some lovely wordplay. And on poetry again, stop it. They've once again brought an anti-spinner setup as well as this setup, I'm excited to see how well Kraken can do, it was a good season last year. Lockjaw return for the 2021 season as we thought they probably would. This machine is looking very nice indeed with its single vertical spinning blade now in the centre of the robot. It's forks there to get underneath everything. They converted to brushless for the 2020 season and were struggling all the way through the regular season with it. But after a string of wins to a bounty championship, this thing is looking strong going into the 2021 season. I'm very excited. Lucky are back. After a couple of years out, the Canadian launcher 4-bar flipper is back once again and redesigned once again 
with some new wheels on the outside, more power in the flipper and some new front plow sections. This new version of Lucky looks very good indeed. And I'm excited to see it back. It was definitely lacking in the 2020 season. We did miss it quite considerably. So welcome back, Lucky. Mad Catter are back with an offset vertical spinner, something we haven't seen done before, and one lifting arm. The team from Martin Mason's mine team, Bad Kitty, are back once again. And I'm very excited. This new front plow should defect against anything, including Tombstone, which is who they've mainly designed it for. And after having faced them last season, I think they could have done it. This new one should do very well. I'm very excited. Malice are back as well for the 2021 season. The drumette returns this horizontal spinning disc, this thick disc, managed to dish out plenty of hits last year. Their main weakness, however, was the fact that they could get stuck on their back, but no longer. They have created a bunny tail for Bunny's bot and now Malice will no longer get stuck on its backside, which is a good improvement and one that was definitely needed. Mammoth Return completely redesigned. This thing looks amazing. It has a massive new weapon on it. It has wheel pod sections that look really solid. Mammoth showed last season that it is a real force to be reckoned with and people should not underestimate it and most definitely they shouldn't as now it has two chains. That's Plenty of redundancy on that system, meaning we should see it getting back up from being turned over and flipping things. And I'm very excited to see Mammoth back. I'm very, very excited. I'm also very excited to see Minotaur back in action. Finally, the Brazilian Bull returns. It was another one that was definitely missing last year. And I'm very excited to see it back under new captaincy this time. Team Riobots never fail to disappoint, even in seasons where they're not doing well, as they proved in 2019. They really came back strong at the end and managed to get all the way into the bracket, which was very good work from them. Riobots and Monitor, they're back on the scene. Everyone watch out. Overhaul return, and they haven't been here since 2018. Has the field changed too much for them? Well, they have worked for that because they've come back with this really thick looking plow, a new grabber clamp bot lift type thing. And no longer are they worried about protecting their wheels or anything. They've got exposed wheels this time round big thick wheels that should take a few impacts which is excellent work from them the team looking very good and the robot also looking very good p1 is back and its full name of course p1 lm the car themed robot the racing car themed robot the formula one themed robot looks very cool and has a few more tricks up its sleeves to hopefully not get hard done by the selection committee this season of course they didn't make the round of 32 last year maybe they should maybe they shouldn't there's a whole video on that on the channel but hopefully this year there will be no questioning p1's ability pain trainer back with a redesigned weapon and a redesigned robot in general actually the new pain train looks very cool indeed evan arias and team have worked very hard to make this very meaty drum spinner really pack a punch there's a really cool test video out there of it. And of course, this time round, they're sponsored by Norwalk Havoc Robot League. That is some big, big plays from Team Shredder. I'm excited to see it in action. Another new team for this year is, pardon my French, the Trisk Spinner? Three discs drum thing? It's a drum spinner. It's pardon my French, and it is here with Zoot, the mini bot as well in tow. This robot looks very cool indeed and has been a couple of years in the making. Obviously they couldn't come last year because of COVID and everything, but they are finally on the stage and ready to compete. I'm excited to see part of my French in action and best of luck to Philippe Boyer, their team captain. Now here's something I didn't think I'd see back again. It is Perfect Phoenix as it was before. Yes, they've managed to straighten it. It of course had a couple of decent fights last year that were reasonably entertaining, most notably against Atom94, who unfortunately aren't here this season. Tyler, aka Doom Kid, of course, back in the captain's role and a very competent driver. This thing should not be underestimated, especially as it is brutality in black and red. Rampage also returned this year with a completely redesigned robot vertical spinner with two very cool looking ear sections. A big front wedge and four wheel drive this time round. The whole robot is made of AR500. This thing should be incredibly strong. Incredibly, incredibly strong. It is some thick bits of metal attached together and I'm excited to see it. It is a four wheel drive vert. We all know that they can be very competent indeed. Best of luck to Team Rampage. Retrograde, an offshoot of Team Bloodsport this year, are bringing this lifter undercutter robot. 
retrograde features this sort of clamp style thing that we can see from the likes of Big Dill. Anybody who says that these wheels are too exposed clearly don't know that there are robots underneath the robot as well that help it drive when these wheels eventually get removed, if they get removed. It's a very nicely designed robot and I'm excited to see it in action to see what it can do. I'm also excited to see what the new Ribot can do. The most powerful robot in the competition, it has the highest voltage going through any BattleBots we have ever seen. The new Ribot features a multitude of weapons to choose from, the disc, the lifter, the undercutter, and new for this year, the drum attachment as well. My Frog King made it all the way deep into the tournament bracket last year, and I'm hoping that they can do it again. They may even go all the way. We shall have to wait and see. New to the BattleBot scene for this season is Riptide, the egg beater that has been scaled up from a Norwalk competitor, Beetleweight Robot has been scaled up to heavyweight form. Egg beaters, of course, notorious for causing a lot of damage. This thing has two lifting forks as well that it can use in any way it likes, including self-writing if it so chooses. So long as they keep working, that thing could be quite the one to watch. It looks very cool, it looks very competent, and I'm very excited to see it in action. Rotated return, more gold than ever, and I never thought that was going to be possible, but here they are, proving me wrong. The new rotator sticking with the single disc. It is a shame that we don't have the two discs, but I understand it, Victor. We get it, and it works. This thing showed a lot of people that this is a robot to be reckoned with, and rotator took some names, including the bounty title off of Bronco. I'm excited to see rotator back in the box this season. Rusty are back this season as well and completely redesigned this new Rusty is a lot squatter than before. They've used the wrong picture here in the preview picture but we all know what the new one looks like. It's squat. It has a hammer that goes all the way back on the robot that could cause some real damage. It's small, it's compact, it's brushless tracked and I'm very excited to be using the rhymes again. Oh deep joy, this thing looks far sturdier than last year. Sawblaze return with four forks this time. They've won up to their fork game and have four on the front. I'm guessing that this is interchangeable perhaps, or maybe it isn't, I don't know, but they go for all the different setups. They've got these lovely large UHMW by the looks of things, side bits in front of the wheels to protect the wheels a bit more and to give the whole plow a bit more girth. It looks like a very well done robot, as you'd expect from Sawblaze. Shatter return this year with this weird glaive weapon that looks dangerous, deadly, and oh god, I don't want to be hit by it, but by George, I do want to see Shatter in the box again because it looks so good. It is always one of the best looking robots in the field and they have not disappointed this year. The team shirt's also on point for this year. Very good looking. They also have last year's hammer back again, which of course took out Lockjaw last year. Should be very competent this year. Scorpios are back and have several different setups this year. If you've been keeping track of the Team Scorpios YouTube channel, you'd know. Be sure to go and check that out. But the most notable is that new spinning weapon on the top of their articulated section. The Hammer Saw saw them all the way to a bounty championship last year. They took out Ice Wave. They could do very well again this year. I'm excited to see them back in action. Team Scorpios looking ready. Slamo is back for 2021, complete different paint job, completely redesigned, but still the same concept. The suplex, a grab lift, suplex, and Craig Danby looking very stylish and trendy as well, might I say. Very sort of punky and rock star. I'm getting quite warm. Is it warm in here? I think it's warm in here. Slamo looks very cool this season. I'm very excited to see it back in action. Oh, I'm going to need one of them t shirts. They're so cool. Smee! Yeah, they're back. It's me, and uh, they have completely redesigned colour-wise, but not too much has changed otherwise. You've got the four wheels on the inside, you've got the spinners, and you've got the big wedge thing. Somebody else who looks reasonably unchanged for this season is Sub-Zero. However, you will have to remember that they got completely torn apart by Witch Doctor in the bounty match, so they've completely rebuilt this, and it looks really, really cool. We also have Spitfire, the drone back, the only drone standing, the last drone standing, back with Team Sub-Zero this year, which is always very, very cool to see. I'm excited to see Sub-Zero back in the lack of a Bronco. This is the new cool thing. The new robot for this year is Switchback, this sort of multi-bladed drum 
spinner that you can articulate and put in place. It is not a hammer drum. Stop it. It's not a hammer drum. They don't even use it like that. They put the drum in place. They go towards you. They can hit you anywhere, top, middle or bottom of your robot. They can find the weak spots. And that is the point of switchback. It looks very cool. It's a very cool concept. I'm excited to see it in action to see what it can do. Tantrum are back. But as Aaron Hill is off with Blip this year, they needed new drivers. And so under new captaincy of Ginger and Alex, these two have Tantrum looking very cool this year. Tantrum shocked us all in the 2020 season, making it all the way through to the round of four. The semi-finalists, can they do it again? That is the big question. I'm excited to see Tantrum back in action because it is such a cool robot. A team that have completely redesigned is Tombstone. And I never thought I'd say those words. They have a complete new look this year. The new top armor, the new bottom armor, the new blade, a new custom motor powering that weapon, new setup for the drive, new everything on Tombstone. It is a beast. However, with all those changes, there's nowhere really to test Tombstone safely. So the first test will be the box. Will it go well for them? We shall have to wait and see. Triple Crown is a new robot brought to us from an old team. The team that brought us Panzer Mark 1, 2, 3, 4 have brought us this new strange robot that uses a new strange type of wheel. The weapon pods are interchangeable. They can take them on and off. The wheels can move them anywhere around the arena. This could be a very interesting test run for a new robot. Best of luck, Triple Crown. Uppercut are back this season. So, so impressive in the 2020 season, blowing up Sawblaze in that excellent, excellent fight and really just doing a mischief to them. Uppercut looked unstoppable until they didn't anymore. So hopefully they'll have fixed the problems that they had and come back even stronger. Real, real potential to win the championship this time round. A decent vertical spinner. Very powerful. Watch out. Valkyrie return with a new version of an old weapon. This Mr. Cavity, or is it Dr. Cavity? I forget. But the new Undercutter Blade looks very nice indeed. The robot also looking very cool as well. Not quite as detailed as last year in design-wise, but still looks the part, and I'm very excited to see it back in action. Hopefully they won't get drawn against Whiplash twice this year. That is an unfortunate shame that the drawing went that way for them. They could have gone much further. Speaking of Whiplash, they are back the number two bot for this year, and hopefully getting rid of that second place curse that seems to be hanging around those robots that managed to come runner up. Whiplash look very good and seemingly unchanged for this year, but I know that there are some changes on the way. Will they have an answer for Endgame this time round? We shall have to wait and see if they come to fight them. We can probably assume that they might fight Defender at some point. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. Witch Doctor return with many, many upgrades. They're longer this time round. They've got their two discs ready to go, but the weapon belts are on the outside this time. The motor has been put in a different position, which is why the robot is longer. They've got big wheels at the back. They've got ears to drive upside down if that Shremet goes down. They've got these new front wedgelet sections that show off little bone claw things that have been 3D printed. It all looks very, very cool. The nice theming and Witch Doctor looks ready for battle. And last, but by no means least, they said it was retired, but they're back once again. New, this time round, Yeti are back in action. Greg Gibson teaming up with Christian Carlsberg of Team C2 Robotics. Yeti is back and badder than ever. The new drum, the new lifting forks that can retract all the way into the robot this time round so they can go all out smash. I'm very excited to see what the new Yeti can do. Those are the robots competing in BattleBots Season 6. And that's just about all for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel if you are new. Be sure to check out World of Woodrow over on Facebook to keep up to date with all of the latest news. And I shall see you next time that there is a load of news. Until then, bye-bye.